Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and in this video, I'll cover the basics of understanding winds. Now, this is important to know because taking off and landing into the wind is the most preferred technique because it requires less power and generally offers more controllability in the takeoff and landing. Now, helicopter pilots are far more conscious of the wind speed and direction from what I've found because we operate at lower air speeds and altitudes where wind is a bigger influence compared to our fixed wing brethren or brethren who seem to uh, only care about the winds during takeoff and landing. But without further delay, let's get started. Now as helicopter pilots, we wanna know wind direction and speed. It affects navigation, performance, and even the direction that we fly towards in the event of emergencies. And we have a few ways to identify this, uh, or these wind conditions, starting with man-made. And that's man-made indications. So for, as far as man-made indications, probably the most prevalent one that you're gonna see and it's gonna be at every airfield, uh, are your wind socks. So wind socks, generally you have your pole with a wind sock. Um, it's gonna be located somewhere on the airfield, probably closer to your, uh, uh, your main um, runway, but they generally weather vane into the wind with at least three knots of airspeed. Now, if they're fully extended, it's usually representing a 15 knot uh, wind on the airfield. So spotting this early uh, can be, a, or should be a part of your before landing routine as well as your before takeoff routine. But what if you're flying in an area other than an airfield and there's no wind sock available? Well, some other man-made indications for wind could be things like uh, flags or banners. So say you're flying along, uh, you're looking down every now and then, and you just see some flags out waving in the wind. Well, these are awesome indications because uh, they're free. They're just usually all over cities, stuff like that. You can look down and see some flags, generally giving you the same concept as a wind sock. It's letting you know where the winds are coming from. So as a pilot, uh, especially a helicopter pilot, you should train yourself to always be monitoring for signs like this. Now, another man-made indication that you can have is just while you're in flight, checking your things like your, uh, your ASOS, your AWOS, uh, your ATIS, things like that. So these are your um, your automated weather service stations or your weather stations that are giving you some kind of indication of, hey, the winds are from this direction at this speed. And by just pulling out your VFR sectional and taking a look around, tuning up these radios, you can start to build your situational awareness because you kind of build the picture of at this air airfield, maybe the winds are from the northeast. At this airfield, they're out of the north. And you can kind of start to, uh, to paint that picture. Now, the last man-made wind uh, determining... Uh, tool that I'm going to cover here and kind of borderline man-made versus nature-made, but uh, smoke and dust clouds. So as you're flying along, you know, maybe somebody's got a campfire out there or somebody's driving on a dirt road, stuff like that, and it starts to, to have a plume of either smoke or dust. Well, this is just an easy indication of where the winds are coming from, but there's some, uh, some tips and tricks for that. So say you have your campfire here, it's got the fire going. Well, the smoke generally is gonna be rising and showing you some kind of indir or indication of where the winds are carrying that smoke or dust. Now, the more horizontal the plume, the faster the wind, the more vertical, the slower the, the, uh, the wind. But as a general rule of thumb, a 45 degree angle here for rising smoke generally equates to about 10 to 15 knots of wind. Now, moving on from man-made indications, we'll get into some of the uh, naturally occurring or the nature-made. Uh, wind indications. Uh, so some of the things you can look for, just looking down at trees. It's a big indication here. If you see either the entire tree or the tops of trees uh, starting to have some kind of lean into it, that's a good indication. So in this example, wind blowing from left to right, it's blowing uh, the top of the tree over. Um, also, as far as trees, that silvery underside of the leaves, it's easier to see when you're flying downwind uh, while there's uh, uh, more green when you're flying upwind. This because the wind is flipping that leaf over and it, it, it has a slightly different color. If you start to train your eye, you can start to see that, especially when you're lower altitude flying closer to the trees. Now, next indication that you can get uh, is just fields of tall grass. Now, you can sometimes see the waves in these fields if the winds are strong enough. Generally, you got to have about 10 to 15 knots, but you'll start to see in a field just grass waving along as you're flying over. So the same concept can be applied to for lakes. So in lakes, once you start to see waves, this is kind of that natural indication that you can look forward to see where the winds are coming from. Um, further on the lakes, uh, say you have a lake over here. Uh, you have 
these waves over here, if you start to see white capping in the waves, that's generally indication that the surface winds are getting greater than 15 knots. Now there's a lot of nautical references that'll you know, break this apart and get even more into detail, but generally, if you start to see white caps and waves, that's probably getting indications of stronger winds greater than about 15 knots. Also for lakes, water is generally smooth on the upwind side, and it's generally more wavy on the downwind side. So another indication to look for. And that's generally because the wind kind of enters the lake and it has more time to affect the water the further it gets along the, uh, the lake. Uh, another thing for lakes, uh, sometimes you'll see a dock with some moored boats. So say we got a little dock here and pardon the drawing, but a moored boat. Uh, so moored boats are generally going to point into the wind or the, the direction of the mooring line. So another telltale signs um, of this is just looking for the docks or anything that may be anchored because the mooring line is generally going to show you where the, uh, the wind is pushing an object that's been anchored or moored. So another telltale sign uh, for nature occurring is going to be looking for the presence of birds. As you fly along, uh, birds sometimes get spooked or just, you know, they're taking off. But just like us, they want to take off and land into the wind. So as you're flying along, if you're noting, you know, the tops of trees, a flock of birds taking off, well, that's probably an indication of where the winds are coming from because they generally want to take off into the wind so that they're, you know, getting the best chance that they can. Uh, but that concludes part one of understanding the winds. And part two, I'm going to get into some of the indications that you get in the cockpit uh, and some tips and tricks that you can kind of identify and narrow down exactly where the winds are in the event that you don't have the man-made indications or the nature-made indications. But be to or uh, continue to to tune into the uh, next video. Once again, I'm Jacob. This has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 minutes or less.